Hello, it's Anna from The Last Stitch. In today's video, it's a bit of a combination of two things because first of all, it's been quite a while since I last gave you all an update about what's been going on behind the scenes. So I thought I should recap all the things that has been going in on basically the last year or so. And because I like to combine things and also talk about sewing in general, I will give you an update while I'm also cutting out fabric for my latest sewing pattern, the girly knit top which has little puff sleeves. I'm actually wearing the striped one right now and also comes in a long sleeve version and also a turtleneck option. It's such a great pattern. I love it so much. And speaking of sewing knit fabrics, it can actually be a bit tricky to cut it out because knit fabric doesn't quite behave the same way as woven. So in my opinion, you do need to use a few special techniques and approaches that are a little bit different. So I will share all those things in this video as well. And of course, also talk about all the stuff that's been going on. And by the way, if you're curious about the girly top pattern, link to that particular pattern is of course in the description section. Now let's start cutting. So my first tip is that I usually cut knit fabrics as a single layer. And the reason for that is because knits are quite uh, soft and supple. And also there are usually some type of patterns or stripes that you want to account for. So there are basically two ways you can approach this. Either you can do like I'm doing here is that I cut the first half of the pattern and then when I reach the midpoint, which I've marked with the pins, then I just flip the pattern over and cut the second half. Another option is of course that you could just trace out the second half of the pattern as well. So you have a full pattern piece. That's even easier. So you can basically pick and choose whatever you like. I'm just showing this method as well. And also, by the way, if you're sewing a striped fabric, I recommend that you remove the actual pattern piece uh, after you have cut the first half and then you just fold the cut fabric piece over and use that as a pattern because that will ensure that you can match out the stripes exactly so there will be no movement. That's the approach I used for instance on this top. As you can see, I'm, I think I've done a pretty good job with the with the stripe matching, right? Uh, and that is because I use this method that I'm showing you now. I cut the first half, fold it over, cut the second half and I always cut everything as a single layer. So for instance, I also cut one sleeve piece at the time when I'm sewing striped fabrics because that also helps a lot. One thing that is important, but you probably already know, but it's good just a reminder is that don't let knit fabric or any type of fabric basically to hang down from your cutting table because that will stretch out the fabric and it will actually pull even the pieces you are cutting on the table. So it will kind of distort them. As you know, some knits are extremely stretchy. So there's definitely a big risk that you're going to have a stretched out piece on the table if you have fabric hanging down because the weight of the fabric will kind of pull everything down. So what I like to do is that I just lift up the fabric and then I just create a little bit of a roll of the fabric that I'm not using currently. I hope that makes sense. You probably already know this, but in case you don't, I, I hope that you uh, keep that in mind for future cutting. I thought I should take a little bit of a break now and share some of the things I've been working on since I last like did a proper update on YouTube, which I think was about a year ago. Oof, time really flies. now. The reason why I haven't been making videos is very simple. I, I haven't been able to find the time. So I've been working a lot on developing more sewing pattern because that's something I've definitely felt was lacking in my catalog of products. So since I last talked to you, I've released three sewing patterns. Uh, first of all, I released the AV cardigan, which is a really stylish and comfortable like cardigan jacket. So you can both wear it like a comfortable cozy thing and you can also wear it in a more dressier occasion. It has some really interesting seaming, several color options and also you can add pockets if you like because I love having pockets on my cardigan. So that's a really one of those things that I felt was very very important to add to my cardigan pattern. And after that I released the Easelin Barrett pattern. Again a really versatile pattern with lots of different options that went really well. Uh, and then the final pattern that I released this spring of this year is the girly top, the one I'm wearing right now, which is a pattern that is a really versatile pattern again, because I do like to make patterns that I can keep on giving. So if you've done one style 
and you nail down the fit and everything. I want you to be able to repeat that pattern by not having to make the exact same garment. For instance, there is a long sleeve option, there are two different cuffs options, uh, you can use a neckband or you can do it with a turtleneck because again I like to have lots of different options that you can add to that pattern and all these patterns if you're curious I will link to those in below in the description section and you can also of course find them over at my web shop uh, shop thelaststitch.com if you're curious to know all about my sewing patterns I have several more over there as well now I forgot something that I really need to mention and that is should you pre-wash your knit fabric before cutting? Well, the short answer is it depends, sorry. Uh, but now I'm gonna give you a more in-depth answer. What I'm working on right now is 100% cotton knit and I haven't pre-washed it. And now you may ask, why haven't you? Because it might shrink, yes, it might shrink. It might shrink about 5% normally. Uh, and to me, that isn't that big of a deal. I can absolutely take that trade-off because not pre-washing it makes it so much easier to cut because if you pre-wash knit fabrics they have a tendency of getting a little bit twisted and a bit more difficult to manage so in my case my my personal opinion is that if the fabric is not shrinking more than five percent i'd rather have a smooth cutting experience than having the exact same length after washing now that is true for cotton Rayon could also be true, depends on the type of knit, but there are also fabric that you should pre-wash definitely. And those are in particular wool and linen fabric and also like loosely knitted uh, sweater knits a lot because they will generally speaking shrink a lot. And for instance, wool will keep on shrinking. So even though if you wash it once, it will likely shrink more the second time you wash it. So I would never so a wool knit garment without pre-washing it for sure. On the other hand, uh, if you're sewing with synthetic uh, knits such as activewear fabrics, uh, polyester lycra fabric, those will not shrink basically. So un unless you're concerned about any residue or dirty fabric, you definitely do not have to pre-wash them because again, just a little bit easier to cut it when it's fresh off the roll. As I get, we have to go by case by case. Sometimes I feel a little bit like self-conscious about giving advice because then someone says, oh, but I wash something and it drink a lot. And I'm like, oh no, you shouldn't listen to me. But that's just a general guidelines. And you have to, as I said, use your own judgment basically when it comes to pre-washing. And speaking of time another thing that has happened since i last talked to you is the fact that i've gotten back to a day job yeah because when i actually quit my day job to focus full time on the last stitch about it's almost two years now um and that worked really well but in the spring of 2022 this year uh, as you all know a lot of things started to feel quite unsettling just then we were kind of easing out from the pandemic. A lot of other things happened, which to me felt like this is definitely not um, a time where you don't have a safety net. So I actually got a day job again. Now it's not full time, it's part time. So that obviously means I have less time to focus on the last stitch. The upside is of course that I feel a little bit more secure financially. And if that wasn't enough, I have also been hard at work uh, on my next sewing book, which is a book about pattern fitting for knits, which I am doing with a co-author, a pattern constructor, which is really awesome. And we're doing this project together, but it takes so much time because we are doing everything ourselves lots of illustration, lots of step-by-step -step tutorials. It's, it's both about pattern fitting for knits, but it also has a lot of sewing techniques. So we have done so many technical illustrations. It's crazy. I, I think we're about halfway through now and we started working on this book about a year ago. We haven't been, you know, working on it consistently, but you know, kind, kind of consistently. Um, so we actually did a live stream about this book last year. So if you're curious about that, you can check out that video. And of course, I've also done a blog post about it. I think several. Um, I think it's going to be a, a fabulous book. I definitely feel so. But again, we are stretching the bar, you know, so high. Generally speaking, it is a little bit harder to use regular tracing pen, tracing wheels and stuff like that uh, when you're adding notch uh, to knits. 
So I use a different method. Now this is maybe not for you, just uh, you do what works best for you because the one I'm doing definitely requires a bit of a precision. So what I do is that I use a very sharp pair of scissors. This is Kai Scissors, a wonderful brand. I will definitely link to this product in the description section because they, they are so sharp that I'm able to kind very tiny cuts, tiny tiny notches into the fabric. That means that I don't have to rely on any type of tracing material to add the notches. Now of course it comes with a risk, right? Because for instance a lot of seam allowance on knit pants are quite small. So you can definitely not go crazy with your scissors. It has to be like a tiny, just a couple of millimeters, like um, one eighth of an inch or something like that. Just tiny, tiny, tiny cut. And if you're not able to do that, either technically or using the type of scissors that you have that are not sharp enough, then perhaps you should use some other method, trying to ha use some other um, tracing pen that really sticks to knit fabric. So definitely don't do this if you feel a little bit nervous about it, but I like it because it's so fast and it doesn't disappear when I'm working with the pattern pieces. Also a trick or a tip, trick more a tool, a tool that I'm very fond of is this. This is a notch cutter. I definitely think you should invest in one of these, especially if you're uh, using a lot of like PDF pattern that you're printing because th those papers are usually a little bit sturdier than say tissue paper. So what you do is you just use this and you cut into the notches marking on the pattern and then you have a little bit of space to either add the pencil or in my case the scissor. But of course again I don't feel comfortable saying that everyone should do it because you have to uh, look at your own equipment and see if you're able to pull it off. But I, I I'm a big fan of it because it saves me so much time. And I also have a little bit of a bonus tip here and that is sometimes on knit fabrics, especially the dark ones, um, on jerseys in particular, that has a very clear right side and a very clear reverse side, but sometimes it's absolutely impossible to, to, to tell the difference until you start sewing it. So a great tip is to use one of these. This is just a um, painter's tape uh, where I write, uh, write, write, I write, write in this case, and I put this on the right side of the cut pieces and I keep that for as long as I'm sewing the garment. And this is so incredibly helpful. Um, such a game changer. Some use, I think, uh, what's called washi tape. It works the same way, but it's um, something I highly recommend because I have made that mistake several times and sewn together um, a front piece that was cut with the reverse side facing out and then the front piece with the right side facing out. And I couldn't see because it was a dark fabric until I saw it in daylight and it looked, <laughs> it looked really bad actually. <laughs> so a ripping knit fabrics is never fun. So just this little um, preemptive tip or, or proactive tip is really, really useful. So I, I definitely like to use painter's tape uh, when I'm cutting fabric. So I have another update about a project that I've been working on behind the scenes that I'm almost finally done with and that is my first video sewing course. Yes! It hasn't been released as of this video but it's going to be out in October 2022. So if you're watching this video at a later date definitely go and check it out. Uh, the course is about cover stitching, one of my favorite topic to talk about, to share knowledge about, to try out different things. Um, as many of you already know, I am the author of the book Master the Cover Stitch Machine and I've done lots of videos uh, on YouTube as well about cover stitching and on my blog thelaststitch.com. So it's definitely a topic that I have been diving deep into for the last few years. So, but one of the things about cover stitch machine is the fact that they are quite fickle. Now some brands are better than others but generally speaking most people will say that getting a cover stitch machine definitely throws you up for a challenge which is a bit different compared to a regular sewing machine and even a serger. Now a cover stitch machine is an amazing machine to have especially if you love sewing with knits like I do but it definitely comes with a bigger learning curve than both a regular sewing machine and even a serger and even though some brands are definitely better than others most people will have some challenges when it comes to cover stitching. We can definitely throw you off a little bit 
which is why I have created a course about how to troubleshoot and fix all those annoying cover stitch issues that most of us will likely encounter one point or another. So this is like a super detailed, straight to the point, very like before and after, do this to fix this, very specific course. And I've been working on this behind the scenes oh, since last year actually. And now I finally edited, so it's basically just ready to go. I just need to fix a few behind the scenes stuff. So I'm really, really excited to share this course with you. And if you're into cover stitching, I think you will really, really find this course useful. So definitely check back and see when I announce when the course is out. And otherwise you can just hop over to thelostitch.com because there I will announce all the things that I'm working on when I'm releasing them. Now every single piece is actually cut and done. This is a really good idea to do the cutting while I'm chatting to you because it definitely makes cutting a bit more fun because to be honest, not a fan. So I hope that you enjoyed this little update with me learning about all the stuff that had been going on and of course stay tuned for more announcement. Uh, I will be launching my cover stitch course in October of this year, 2022 and the book about pattern fitting for knits will be out in fall of 2023 fingers crossed uh, so yeah there are lots of stuff and hopefully i will be able to put out some more things as well in the meantime i will definitely try to be more consistent with the youtube videos i have actually planned like a content schedule uh, for the entire uh, year but who knows you know i'm actually oh i, I i'm actually going up to full time for a bit now at my day job oh i forgot the man i forgot about that i was in denial because i'm I'm also filling up for another person that has left until they find a replacement. So I'm actually going to have two jobs over there plus the last stitch. Oh yeah, it's going to be a busy fall. I have to laugh about it because it sounds like a lot to be honest. <laughs> oh well, that, that's it. What anybody is angry. Thank you so much for watching this video and for following me along during this cutting session and update about my life. And well, I will talk to you soon. Stay safe. Bye-bye.